Hi everyone, it's me again. I've actually been missing vlogging and I've done a vlog since the last time I vlogged. There's lots of little vlogging and vlogging. Um, so from doing nothing for the past few months, I'm actually hooked again, which usually happens with me. So I've been asked to talk about Dubai and what makes it different to other cities because I live here and I've lived here for 10 years, um, nearly. I moved with my family in 2005 because they just had enough of England and they'd had enough of no sunshine and my mum had family here who said that living here was great and so did my dad. He had friends actually. Um, so they thought they'd just move here, didn't have a job or anything, just decided to move. And yeah, we've been here ever since. I spent three years out of Dubai when I went to study journalism at university in 2009 but I come back every holiday so really it feels like I've never left it properly. I've been asked by someone who commented to talk about the city and I thought it was a great idea to share it with you because everyone seems to have different conceptions of what Dubai is like. Some people think it's really strict and you can't go clubbing and you can't wear dresses and you know, they have all these ridiculous laws, but actually it's a lot easier to live here than most people would think. So I'll tell you a few things about it. So what makes Dubai different is, I think the main thing is the heat. It's hot all year round virtually. I mean, December, January, February, it will be a little bit cooler in the sense that it drops to 17, 18 degrees at night. And, you know, you might need a cardigan, but you don't really need a scarf and a coat and boots which is something I really miss at Christmas time because it doesn't feel like you're having winter. Um, but at the same time it's great because when you walk out of a shopping centre or you walk out of your house you're not freezing instantly and you don't just want to rush into a car with heating on. In fact everywhere you walk into you've got AC um, so it's really chilly actually. So sometimes apart from the fact that they don't really like you walking around with like flimsy strap tops and they don't want you walking around in little skirts. It's actually chilly enough in the malls that you actually do need to cover up a bit and you do need a bit of a cardigan or a little kimono or jacket to throw over it. Other than the climate, it is constantly growing. I mean, the roads are busy no matter what time it is. I don't think this was the case about four or five years ago, but it's got a lot busier. So if you think you'll head out at three o'clock in the afternoon to go to the shopping centre. You're likely to have a little bit of a queue in the car park. You're likely to struggle a little bit to find a space in the car park, no matter what time you go to the mall. There are constantly, yeah, more people moving here. And I think the appeal of Dubai is that because it's growing so rapidly and constantly that, um, there are so many opportunities for people, no matter what industry you're in. I wanted to work in the UK, I wanted to work for a magazine in the UK, or a news publication in the UK. Uh, but that didn't end up working out because I knew I would have to intern for months and months and months. Which I'm not adverse to doing, and I wish I had. Part of me thinks I should have stuck it out there and I should have interned, but I didn't really know that that was how things worked and that's how you got a full-time job in journalism in the UK because I had been advised against it and doing longer internships than three months once I'd graduated but I wish I had ignored that advice and put the uh, time in to do it but instead I did that in Dubai when I moved here I was living with my family so I didn't have to worry about rent, bills etc so I interned for one month with this magazine here which is like the UK's equivalent to Heap. So it's called Aflan and it's celeb gossip, film, restaurant reviews, hotel reviews, lifestyle and I worked on their travel supplement uh, mostly which was called Jet Set but the feature that I wrote ended up being within the main magazine. But then after that I interned at Cosmopolitan Middle East for three months and I had a great time there. I got to do loads of things like Vox Pops and interviewing people and helping with styling and fashion shoots, which I really, really enjoyed. It was hard work, but it was fun. And through that, I got my job at the magazine I work at now, which is called Good Taste, because the deputy editor of 
my magazine met with the deputy editor of Cosmo because they're good friends. Cosmo said we have an intern because my deaf ed said that they needed a junior graduate writer and it seemed to fit the bill and I got the job. So that was good, but I went a bit off topic there. That's just how I got my job. But it's the same for all industries, really. In the UK, if you're struggling to get a job, a lot of people do move out here and they end up going to a job in their industry or in an industry similar to it, or one that they'd never even thought about going into before, and they'll end up getting a job eventually. It does take time, but they do end up finding one. So I think that's another draw to the city. There's always new things happening. It's constantly buzzing in Dubai as well. You know, every week there'll be a new launch of something, whether it's a bakery or a club or a restaurant or a bar. There's always something new happening, even property launches. Everywhere you do look, there is cranes or construction happening, which can be quite frustrating. It causes a lot of traffic because unlike the UK and the US, there aren't lots of side streets that you can take to get to where you need to go. And if there are shortcuts, everyone else has found them already. But it shows that, you know, it is doing well and it's not suffering as much as other countries might be after the whole recession. I think the main downside to Dubai is that you can't really walk to many places. You have to get taxis or public transport, which they are developing quite well here. You've got the metro, which takes you from one side of Dubai to the other. You've got buses and taxis galore. I think that's how most people get about. Um, it's very rare to see someone walking from one place to another. And it's difficult because there aren't pavements set out in all the places that you'd like to walk to and from. There's just sand, so it's not very safe either. But it is a very, very glamorous city. It's not easy to find a chilled out bar or restaurant. There are more and more appearing you know, there's great events that happen here. There's a hotel that I especially like. It's called the Media One Hotel. And I'll tell you more about the area it's in, Media City, in a minute. But they do come up with brilliant events that make me feel a lot less homesick. Um, because they'll have artists from the UK performing on this one level of it that's sort of more warehousey And it's a lot more done to earth. Like, you aren't going to have marble floors and swanky bar tables it's just it is it's a bit like going to a festival or a club night but without all the glitz and glam but at the same time it is nice it's nice especially with my job i do get to go to a lot of restaurants and bars and launches that i probably wouldn't have been able to go to at such a young age uh, without paying stupid amounts of money for in the uk which is really nice it is it's exciting and i think when you do come to Dubai for a holiday, you're never short of places to go out. There are malls galore. That is what you do on the weekend here, mostly. It's either going to the mall, going for brunches, which is um, where you go to a restaurant and they'll have all you can eat and drink alcohol as well. And you just pay like a certain amount. I think it's roughly 40, 50 quid, but that's all you can eat and drink. And it's great. It's always a fun day out, but that's really popular among expats who live in Dubai and tourists who come here. There's also water parks. Um, they're building more sort of outdoor promenade sort of areas where you can go shopping as well. So also, I was talking about the Media One Hotel being in an area called Media City. Everywhere in Dubai sort of segregated into areas. I work in a place called Media City. That's where most of the magazine, television, news channel are based. So, you know, you'll find the headquarters for the Middle East, Hello, and OK Magazine and Harper's Bazaar and all that. Their offices are in that area. My magazine's offices are in that area. So there's Reuters, CNN, BBC. They're all in that area. Then you go to like living areas and everyone has different... There are little communities. So there's a place called Emirates Hills and that's where a lot of the expats live. I live on Sheikh Zayed Road, which is the central sort of road in the city. So if you want to get from one side of the city to the other, it's one of the most commonly used roads. And it's when a lot of the hotels are. I think it's really nice. So that's a bit about how Dubai sort of works. You do have a really nice lifestyle here. And I'm enjoying it for now. Obviously, there are good and bad days. There are days when I just want to go back to the UK and I really miss it. But there are plenty of times when I love living here. And I do think I am really lucky to be 
Mm. Night life wise, there's so much to do. The clubs and bars are on par with the UK, if not better. You know, we've got brands that are over from the UK and Ibiza, like Blue Marlin and Pasha, which is opening soon, I think. And we've got Mahiki, which is a favourite of mine. The bars are really nice as well. You know, they all appeal to different people. I think Dubai's got the best of both worlds. You can go really high end. And then the next day, you could just be in a really chilled out bar. You don't always have to spend loads. We've got ladies' nights here, which are brilliant. You know, it's like free drinks for ladies until a certain time or all night and that is great for us girls. Uh, I don't go to as many as I used to before I started working because they're always on a Tuesday and going into work on a Wednesday hungover isn't very fun at all. But I think I've basically said a lot about Dubai. If there's anything else you want to know ask me in the comments or on my blog and I'll be happy to explain whatever your questions are. Oh yeah, Everyone's always asking how people dress here and, you know, are they really strict? You're not going to be able to go to the mall with hot pants on that have your bum hanging out or a really, really low cut top. And I wouldn't do that in the UK either. So it's not that different. When I go clubbing, I'll wear the same dresses that I would wear in the UK. And if not, you see women wearing things a lot more daring than I've seen in clubs I've been to. So yeah, if you do have any other questions, Feel free to leave them below and I will answer them. And if you have any more suggestions, I really appreciate this one. So thank you to the person who asked for this video. But I'm always appreciating any suggestions because I'm quite new to this still. And it's good knowing I'm making a video that someone actually wants to watch as opposed to me just rambling, which I have done in this video, so sorry. But I hope you enjoyed it. And please keep checking my blog and this channel for new videos. Thanks. Bye.